Okay, I'm Shelf Unit, and welcome back. This is my let's play of Shadowrun Returns. We just went and took down some um, effectively. It's it's a BTL thing, so better than life, I think that means. And it's it's essentially bums who um, who have paid for basically false memories, and they just live inside them and. And it's it's like a digital drug, effectively. Um, and so we took out a, a hide out of those, and we are off now back here to collect some people to go on a run. Oh, cherry bomb, cherry bomb flags you down as you walk through the door. Hey, even star, there's a woman looking for you, Jessica something. She's waiting for you by the stage, Bellevue type. Wouldn't order anything, wouldn't touch anything. I think she's afraid of diseases or something. Thanks, Cherry. No charge, chummer. Why's the bus so empty? We don't get much action in the early afternoon. Just a few salarymen slumming touristville and hoping to talk to Madame Sinful and some diehard regulars. Madame Sinful? It's what the downtown folks call Mrs. Kubota. It's a touristville thing. They like to have her, her have a naughty name like that. Who's around? I just got in, but I think Coyote's cleaning the back bar. Mr. Delire is hanging out in his usual place. The vendors downstairs came in a few, minute, few minutes after me. Oh, and Bartlett's here. Don't think you met him yet. Who's Bartlett? John Bartlett. Big presence at the end of the bar. He's in the biz. Connected. You might want to meet him. Is that guy bothering you? You mean my ex? Shane? Yeah. No, he hasn't been in since that last time. No calls or pages or handwritten notes either. Weird. He was so persistent. I guess he finally got the message. Maybe he'll find someone at the Universal Brotherhood of his and settle down. Gonna have a look around. Have fun. Okay, let's have a look. Talk to you, Mr. Bartlett. Full of life, and with a quick smile, the man tilts his head and watches you approach. Hey, lady, what's shaking? Little of this, little of that. I hear that on May. I might have something for you if you got the new yen. Time's money. I'm listening. You ever hear of the Nephilim Network? Of course, you and you have, and in the no lady like you has to have heard of the premier Merc team out there. If you say so. We're a tight unit. We cost a bit more than the common rabble, but we're worth it. Okay, so. It's uh, rather fortunate. We already have a mercenary team who just happened to be around. Let's save there. And grass. I'm very busy. You show me something worth my time or you'll walk away. Mm, got a juicy list of BTR clients straight from Yakuza Syndicate Lab. Dangerous info. I'd rather not handle it, so how about 600? Etiquette gang. Rival BTL tab would pay top dollar if you don't mind getting dirty. Make it 800. I do mind. I'll get someone to do it for me. Deal. Awesome. Just making some cash. Jessica Watts. Hi, Jessica. At a glance, you can tell that Sam's sister Jessica is from a different world. The opposite of Sam in almost every way. Her suit is tailored, her eyes sharp, and her style exudes authority. Miss Watts? Jessica Watts? She eyes you up and down warily. She does a good job of hiding it, but it's clear that she is well outside of her comfort zone. Yes, and you are? My other friends call me Evenstar, and I counted Sam among them. That's funny, I didn't think Sam had any friends. Quality over quantity, I suppose. I'm sorry, it's just it, it doesn't match with the picture of Sam I've had in my head all these years. She shakes free the thought and attempts a lukewarm smile. So, you're one of them? You're one then? The one I called about? The one I was called about? The woman who called herself Coyote contacted me this morning to inform me that my brother was dead and that I should come to this place and speak to someone about the investigation. Sound didn't die of natural causes. He was murdered. She briefly casts her eyes skyward and then gives a small shake of her head. I wish I could share it's a shock, but the circles, given the circles he ran in, Sam hadn't run the shadows in years. If you say, but even so, look at this place, these people, and you. She then furrows her brow, regarding you more critically. You're not with the police, are you? Getting that a lot lately, but no. By the look of her, on her face, she's clearly struggling with this. I'll be honest, I would just as soon put all this behind me. 
the fastest way to do that is through proper channels. Surely there's an official police investigation going on. Why not let the professionals handle this? Lone Star? Professional? Not the ones I've seen. But you must have better things to do than waste your time searching for whoever killed my low-life brother. First, Sam is my friend. Second, I'm being paid for my trouble. She seems genuinely surprised. Someone's paying you? I find it hard to believe that anyone who really knew Sam would put up the money. Who is it? Actually, Sam hired me himself. I don't understand. He set it all up before his death, as a contingency. I might have believed that my drunken sort of a brother hired you to find the person who killed him after he died. The bordered mask drops momentarily, and in a sigh, she reveals a brief glimpse of real emotion. I'll have to get away from Seattle and all his bullshit. Now I'm back, he's dead, and I still have to deal with him. Jessica composes herself, and in a breath, the mask is back in place. Listen to me, Evenstar. You seem like a decent person, but I'm trying to move on with my life. Our mother was killed last year, and Sam, well, Sam was Sam. You know, I've worked so hard to put my family issues behind me. I don't want to see this drag on. I would love nothing more to give you closure and quickly. I appreciate that, but I think I'd prefer to just let it be. No one else needs to get hurt. Your brother had my back when I needed him, and I can't walk away from this. Are we talking about the same man? My brother was worthless, even star. Worthless. He used people. She sighs. She's done. Never mind. I can see you're not going to let this to go. And I respect that you're earning my brother's memory. In your own way. But I hope you can understand how emotional this is for me. Jessica's demeanor instantly changes from reluctant to helpful in the span of a single meditative breath. Maybe you can do things in a way the police can't. Maybe I can help. What do you need to me? When was the last time you saw or spoke to Sam? It's been ages, I can't even remember. The bartender here recalls Sam complaining about arguments with his sister. Well, there was a note on Sam's body, sounded like an apology, and offered to meet up and bury the hatchet. It was signed Jessica. I wrote many such notes in the beginning, but I haven't made an effort for a long time now. I don't know why he would have kept it. Where were you on the night of Sam's murder? I will overlook the implied accusation and tell you that I was at a fundraiser all evening, a very crowded fundraiser. Sam have any enemies? Sam's biggest enemy was Sam. I don't know any of, any of any others. You would likely know better than me these days. Were you and your brother close? I think I made my feelings for Sam pretty clear, don't you? You don't seem to care whether his killer faces justice. Of course I want justice. I just can't let him drag me down again. Show the picture of her and Sam as children. Jessica takes the photo from you guardedly as if it might sting her. But that guard drops the moment she looks at it. Where did you find this? Sam's bunk. I can't believe he kept this. You look so much like his kids and happy. She smiles through a brief reverie. We were twins. Partners in crime, best friends. What happened between the two of you? Things were different back then. We were different. We were a family. Then after our father died, things began to change and we couldn't get back to a new normal. With our dad around, there was always a reassuring order to our lives, but after everything got mixed up, you can never really appreciate the importance of a person in your life until they're gone. The remorse plays wet across her eyes, and it seems as if she's not just talking about her father. Jessica then steals herself to tell the rest. Sam tried to be the man of the house. He truly did, but he couldn't handle it. And pretty soon he had spent every dime of our father's life insurance. Every dime. After that was gone, with Mum working two, three jobs, he spent all our money too. I just couldn't stand the way he abused her trust, so finally I just had to leave. She holds the photo forward, one part of her ready to relinquish it along with the past, and another looking to hold on to both. May I keep this? Please do. Thank you. Tell me about your mother and her death. She was a devout Catholic. I don't think there's an exaggeration to say that she sacrificed her life for Sam and me. But she turned a blind eye to what Sam was becoming, refused to acknowledge his downward slide. I couldn't watch her do it anymore, so I moved out. After I left, we'd drifted, farther and farther apart. I wasn't here when he died. In fact, I don't even know about it until I returned to Seattle five months ago. Where were you living before you moved back here? Calfrey, I brought you down there. It was less of what brought me down there as of what made me leave here. I felt lost in Seattle, so I moved to California to see if I could find myself. And did you? Actually, yes. While I was there, I developed a whole new app. Excuse me. Oh, God. 
I developed a whole new outlook on life, a vision for what the world could become, and I came back here to help make that happen. I've up enough, enough of your time. Thank you, Miss Watts. Just as well, I needed to get back to the office. But before you go, you should know I'm reinterring my brother, mother's body tomorrow, and I'm arranging to have Sam buried with her. Funeral is tomorrow at Our Lady of the Blessed Sacrament, 7 o'clock. You're more than welcome to attend. Thanks. Goodbye, Insta. I hope you find what you're looking for. Stay safe. Okay. Right. I've got 10 karma now. I've got to think about spending it. I'm not sure how to increase my action pool. It might be through quickness. No, it's not. I think I'm going to increase my pistol since it's the best thing I've got. Well, why not? I'll get ley lines. the spirit sounding before and that'll do for the time being okay I'm not really sure what a ley line is but I'll see it let's talk to Mr. Delia if you're talking to me there was business to transact and I'm right am I right yes Mr. Delia I think I have a need you can fill of course you do, that's what you came back. Straight talk. You so you're tracking the Ripper, what can I do for you, Ripper Tracker? Now he's put a crew together. You got a scratch or are you planning to play me out of your earnings? How much is this going to cost me? Well, for your speed, hired help will run you about 1200 ahead. If you start taking on top of jobs, well, the more experienced the runner, the higher the rates. I can pay the runners up front. Excellent. We agree on terms. I got some runners on call if you got any specific special requests. I've got stuff to take care of first. Okay, let's talk to Mr. Chloe. Glad to see you well, even star. You too, Mr. Chloe, holding down the fort. As always, the people are more on edge than usual. Word got around about the latest ripper killing, and people aren't feeling safe. And when people feel unsafe, they either go to ground or they huddle up. You notice how empty the streets are these days? It's because everyone's either locked in their squats, holed up in places like this, or seeking refuge in the nearest Universal Brotherhood chapter house. Safety in numbers, chummer. Not that we need numbers here. I got it covers. No, I bet you do. See you later, Mr. Chloe. Later. And let's go to Coyote. Coyote's wiping down the back bar. She doesn't stop when you approach. Keeps her eyes on her work. Hey. Gina's death wasn't your fault, you know. Yeah, I know. Listen, even start. I don't want to talk about what happened with Gina, okay? What's done is done. Gina's dead, I'm alive, and that's all there is to it. It's the Barons, right? Nothing more to do or say. I'm going to be looking for work, your kind of work, so if something comes up, keep me in mind. I will. Okay, I've got to do this now. The afternoon checklist isn't going to finish itself. Okay. Yep, I'm ready to go. Let's see him. So, I've got. Sh okay. So I need. I need. 
two, do I? So I've got two shamans. I don't need more shamans. I want a rigger. I don't need a mage. Oh no, I don't want a rigger, I want a decker. And I want someone who's going to squish things. A shotgun and a rifle. Yeah, I wanna. Okay, I'm hiring those, and I am going to the warehouse. You return to the docks to meet Shannon Half Sky. Although the Ripper's latest victim was her brother, but Shannon appears cool and professional. A consummate runner by birth, if not by trade. We'll get the job done, and hopefully one of the hearth spirits in this place can point you towards the Ripper. Dealing with spirits can be tricky business, but when they deliver, it's pure platinum. One doesn't have to be an Amer Amerindian shaman to summon and control spirits. Anyone with magical talent can do it. But Shannon seems to have a, a particular connection to the spirit world. I didn't buy anything, did I? Damn it. As you approach the gate, you know something's not right. Doc's already strange and uncomfortable at night. Trigger the need for caution. Then you see it. The guards are missing and the gate's been smashed in. Okay. Right. Let's add that. She's got that. She's got her deck. And what the hell's this? Oof, who's it? Yep. I'm liking. Okay, well, I don't have any med kits, but I've got a heal spell. That'll do. Okay. About our time you showed up. Looks like we weren't the only ones who wanted to take advantage of the situation. And I also just wanted to troll, because I haven't had a troll before. <laughs> Bunch of mercs have been locked, have locked down the area. I don't think they're here for us, though. My guess is there's something worth a bit of coin left in that warehouse. Shouldn't be much of a problem. Any chance we can sneak past? Probably not. They've been doing regular patrols around the perimeter, and the front door looks like it's locked. Okay, let's save the game then. Is there a way we can get back there without worrying? Anything to do over here? No. Anything new over here? Doesn't look like it. Scrawny guard. Yeah, you there. The block is off limits. There's a, a, a gas leak on the docks here. No loitering. This guy doesn't look like one of the hired mercenaries. Hey, hey you listening? Get out of here. I'm not here for you. Just let me through. Look, lady, I don't want to have to do this. But I'm just going to run around. Oh dear. Oh, he was a waste of time. But, 
It's always good to note that I can kill somebody without it actually taking any effort. Now I want to go all the way around here. Thing here that I can use. I mean, I don't know. Okay. I had it there.
this has um, proven to be relatively simple. I'm quite surprised at how easy this is. Okay. What have I got? I got the warehouse key and gained four karma. Right, let's see if there's any anything else laying around. I know I can, I can go in there, but I want to see if there's anything back here. I'm fairly certain I've already done it all, though. Is there any problem? Sorry for the lack of talking. I mean, I'm just very, very concentrate. I'm con trying to concentrate as hard as I can on these things. There's, uh, it just seems like it's uh, something that I should be should be doing. I'm not particularly great at, um, come on, not particularly great at XCOM, but I try hard, so I'm going to see how I do with this. So far though, lots of people dead, and nobody here hurt of mine, so I should like to keep that going. Spirit talk, you head inside the darkened warehouse with Shannon. Her eyes of that far-off gaze associated with looking into the astral plane. When the world changed, the Native American tribes made a resurgence as well. Demanding a place in the new world, they got it. The Salish Shide Council now represents 8.6 million Amerindians across a number of multitude of tribes. Salish, Makar, sorry if I butcher these names, Sinsarach, and others. They've adapted to the awaiting be awakening better than other nations, thanks to a deeper connection to the world, both physical and spiritual. You can see that connection alive in Shannon now. You notice the shift in her focus as she returns to the present. She nods to you. She can sense the spirits in this place. Now you just need to find them. Okay. Let's hope this isn't a crash. It isn't. Okay. Keep Shannon alive. Defeat the runner crew. I can see one, two, three. Let's save here. Um. Okay. Here's the tough one. I think this one... Forty-five percent, really. This seems awfully... Good hit. Yeah, I know we need to get rid of these guys before we summon a spirit. Oh, goody, there's another ogre. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see you there. Right. Okay, let's take down this guy first since he's there. That's perfect. Great news. Good. Let's 
Damn it. Perfect. Let's move. Oh, not you. Okay, well, it worked. Oh, brilliant. He's being... Why is he... Okay, well... Good hit. Great hit, girl. Out of ammo. Of course she's out of ammo. Missed. Well. That works. Are there others? Reload. Come out there and reload. Reload. Reload and come there. I get in there. guy. Need you to hurry up.
Big shit. Okay, we are just we've nailed this now. Awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow you. Oh I could have summoned something. God damn it. God god damn it. <laughs> That's so annoying. Summon the spirit. And now we talk to the spirit, I suppose. The air grows cold and the spirits of dead children coalesce from the vapour of your breath. The cherubic faces are burned and their lips quiver. It's not really a cherubic face, is it? Their lips quiver as if they're about to cry, but their eyes are round and vacant, and they glare at you now unblinking. We are the innocents who have perished in the flames, choking on smoke as we fell from the sky, crying for our mothers. Delightful. You bring anchors to your world, which was once home to us, and we will use them to testify. Show the first magical fetish to the spirits. We no longer see the world of flesh seeker, only the essence and auras of living things. Words, though, words may echo through the veil, and sometimes, sometimes we may hear them. Last night this place was filled with a scream that went on and on, drawing us to it. It was a man crying out for a witness as he died. And so we came to bear witness, but fled in terror before the malevolent spirit that profaned the man's remains. This spirit was other. It was not of this place. It had twisted its way through the veil and through to the dark to come here. Show the second fetish. When the other had gone, we returned to our vigil. We found two creatures of flesh. One you would call an elf, unsullied by technology and able to channel the energies of the cosmos. Yet his spirit was uh, corrupted from within. He was dark and twisted, yet not like the other, so we did not flee. The second we knew to be a troll. Ribbons of his essence had been flayed from him, leaving cold machinery behind. His aura was the aura of one simple and confused. Between elf and troll lay the remains of the man whose sister now chants to us for justice. The elf, his essence, remains in this place where the man died. Something has been left behind, a small part of him perhaps. Spirit, can you tell us any more? The spirits began to fade, but all but one. Its eyes harden and takes full measure of you, as if to commit everything about you to memory. No, we must not stay. When the spirit's gone, the young shaman releases her hold on the magic tether connecting her to the other realm. She reels from the backlash, or perhaps from the emotional toll of knowing her brother's last moments. They saw him. They were with him when he died. You all right? She takes a series of controlled breaths, only, for sh only shuddering with the first few. No, but I will be. I, I didn't want, don't want that for him. Not what those poor souls have endured. My brother deserves to be free. He will be free once we find his killer. Yes, the elf and the troll. We have to find that piece of the elf the spirit spoke of. It's our best hope of stopping this. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to end here. And we will return to that next time. Sorry for the sort of lack of uh, talking through some of this, but it's I just find it very, very difficult to, to talk on the, on the actual combat areas. I will try and rectify that for the next one. But uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe. If not, don't worry about it. Um, and yeah, I've been Shelfie in it. Thank you very much. Goodbye.